The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. <clears throat> okay, looking good. Billy Ray feeling good, Lewis. Okay, this week we're going to start off with Sim only today at 9.30. Tomorrow we'll have Shane Smolian. He wants to finish up his segment that we had on Friday. They were unable to finish. And then also on Friday we're going to have Tim Boss, Financial Cycles Weekly out of Florida. Uh, also will be our guest. So we have three guests coming this week, possibly one other, but I uh, haven't been able to reach him and we'll find out if we will just a little bit later. As you can see, I posted the charts for the DAX and the FTSE. I both did the 15 minute and the four hour chart. You can see that we're trying to break out uh, to the upside, much like we're looking at here in the U.S. market as we come in here this morning with more good news. The fact that the country is opening up and Things will be just as good as ever as we see new highs coming, as they're telling us on Bloomberg today. Okay, folks, let's take a quick look uh, at one chart that I think is very important because it's in the news, and I, I wanted to give it uh, uh, my two cents worth. And believe me, if you pay more than that, you've overpaid. Let's take a quick look here at the crude oil contract. Now, this happens to be the uh, June contract, and the reason why I do that is because that's the one that uh, brought us down to that level of $6. Uh, you can't really trade June and July anymore. The only thing you can do is trade August. And not only that, but uh, many firms won't even allow the trading. There's been a news announcement that came out of China. Mr. Z uh, emailed me and then called me this morning about it. And that was the fact that the ICBC Bank has taken such a big hit in this oil thing from the dude over in Singapore that uh, they've disallowed trading in all of gasoline, uh, crude oil, heating oil. They've disallowed all that, and they also put in soybeans. And that's the one that is uh, a little troubling to me. That might mean that, uh, well, I don't think it means anything, really. But that the fact that they put in soybeans there, because oil and soybeans are pretty much incompatible. You know, you can't eat oil, and soybeans is all protein. So that's going to be an interesting one. Maybe Cy has some insight into that. But uh, usually when a bank takes a big hit like that, they overreact, and uh, that's pretty much uh, what we're looking at. They will get their money out of that, I'm sure, but when, I don't know. We'll have to do it. One of the questions that one of our listeners uh, emailed me over the weekend is a very interesting one, and he asked about, you know, do the markets really uh, go after your stops? And it reminds me of uh, setting and trading with John Hill over the years of many times that uh, we used to call it Hill's Law. He says, put your stop in. They're going to get you at the high tick or low tick anyway, so you might as well take out uh, you know, the, the uh, mystery out of it. But really, they, they really don't. In fact, fact folks, when I, the reason for me going to Chicago to trade on the floor was not to be a floor trader. I just wanted to see if the floor trading was actually fair and equitable for everybody. I wanted to make sure that they didn't see the stops that you had in there. And frankly, they didn't, folks. I mean, I can attest to that. I was there just about three years, and I didn't see any of that. So I think something is uh, amiss if you think that's happening. Most probably what you do is you put your stop really close, like you're putting you know, a two-point stop on the S&P or something like that when we're trading at 50, 60 handles on a day, that's pretty hard to do that. And so I would think that you'd want to be able to uh, give it a little bit more room. But they're not going after your stops, believe me uh, when I say that. It's uh, le electronic trading didn't change it at all, Jay. There really isn't. Uh, and many, that's Bill, uh, Bill, Mr. Bill's saying that people put their stops at round numbers. You shouldn't do that. One, one of the biggest revelations that I ever had when I was in Switzerland uh, once giving a talk to some folks over there, and uh, I had gotten stopped out of like four different different things at the exact high of the day. And it was, you know, I put my, my stops beyond the highs. I don't put them around numbers. I just put them up there. And I, I noticed that it was at the 1.27 number. Well, it wasn't until about three months later when I met um, 
um, Bryce Gilmore that oh, it became very apparent to me that, you know, I was putting my stop exactly at the 1.27 level. My overall view of the market was correct. But in fact, what happened was it really was, uh, you know, enable. Thank you for the, uh, the, the uh, compliment on the newsletter about the baseball analogy. I'm a big fan of Billy Bean, and uh, it was really uh, seeing what's going to be looking on today. Anyway, that that's the main reason is to you've got to put your stop at. And look, folks, let me explain something to you. The real simple: a, you ain't hardly ever going to get the high tick or low tick. I mean, that's that's reserved for God, and she only trades two days a week, so you you just really can't do that. And remember that these stops are there for your protection. And that's the main thing that you have to do. The other thing that you want to remember is that you don't know what's going to happen next. And do you know why? Because all ancient astronaut theorists know that that's the case. So make sure that you keep your stops in for your protection. Very, very important. I've been able to catch up on all my ET stuff over these holidays, so I'm able to see what's going on in the world of ETs. And we'll be, uh, I understand that there might be one landing on the White House lawn very soon, but that may or may not be true. I don't know. The site that I use is a little bit off and on, so sometimes they get knocked off the air. And if you believe any of that, I still have two shares of the Brooklyn Bridge. Okay, the $64 question, is gold going to break out to the upside? If you'll remember last week, one of the things that I focused on was the fact that gold has broken out tremendously to the upside when you look at it in the forms of the currency that you're looking in. Uh, um, Steve Rhodes has done a great deal of work on this, and I think it's really important that you realize that each currency has its own thing. Like the euro, uh, gold is trading, I think, at 1850 or something like that, and the, the Swiss franc and the pound and the yen, all of them were just really... Really uh, unbelievable that they've had these huge moves, taking out the highs of 2016 by a great deal. But if you base it on what the U.S. dollar is doing, that's the whole key to looking at what's going on here. Folks, all I know is that they're putting so much money into these bonds and stuff. Uh, and, of course, the reason why the market is so strong this morning is the fact that we've had the Japan come in and he said, that doesn't make any difference what we do. We're going to buy all the bonds available. No, it doesn't make any difference, whatever the price. And so they basically have thrown caution to the wind. If this doesn't work, folks, we're in big trouble. And that's probably which direction we're going, but who knows. We are certainly living in interesting times, as we know, but we'll be able to see what happens in the future. Keep two two things you watch very closely, folks. Watch the Treasury bonds, because if we can get above that 184 level in the Treasury bonds, that means we're probably going to go to zero rates here. And then also keep an eye on on the U.S. dollar, because if the U.S. dollar starts to weaken, that means that people that are buying this stuff want some protection, and that's when you're going to run into a little bit of a problem, and that could be the thing that makes gold move, but I really don't believe that uh, there's enough money in the world to buy the gold if it starts running, so I don't know. I'm just watching it. It's It's got a very bearish pattern in gold, silver, and platinum, but those could change in a heartbeat, and we could be on our way, and then you have to be uh, a breaking out because if if we do break out and we go uh, we could easily see twenty five hundred dollars or even three thousand dollars on gold if it does break out above that eighteen hundred level so that's not much of a jump in my uh, estimation all right let's take a little break here eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading 
trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. TFNN is launching an open house for our Tiger's Den. For a limited time, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Tiger's Den. Just enter promo code OPEN at checkout and pay nothing for 30 days while you try out your Tiger's Den membership as part of our open house. With market volatility at an all-time high and people all over the world working from home if possible, TFNN is hosting an open house in our Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is an interactive chat room that runs all day where other Tigers and Tigresses discuss trading ideas with the hosts and members along with charts and current market news as well as live access to the charts the hosts use during their programs join us for the tiger's den open house begin your den membership today by just entering open at checkout and pay nothing while you try things out for 30 days for all the details and to start your den membership today visit the front page of tfnn.com don't miss out on the tfnn tiger's den open house taking place now sign up today Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, I'm back. I wanted to uh, bring up a chart here uh, that we've showed this before, but I think it's important right now. Look, just because we've got all this debt, you know, look at these. We've had tremendous markets uh, even during these debt cycles. So, uh, you know, trade what you see, not what you think. And I know that's a hard thing to do, but uh, that's what gets you in trouble is you start to think about what these fundamentals might be. And boy, I'll tell you, they're complex as they can get, as far as I can tell. It's not like what it used to be. Years ago, it was just a simple money supply. If M1 or M2 jumped, my goodness, uh, you know, T-bills and Treasury uh, bonds would, would have used moves. And now the, no one even watches money supply anymore because it's infinite. And that's uh, what's happening. They're trying to save what's going on and in the world, and it's very difficult. We've never gone through anything like this. I mean, this is historically something that has never happened before. Uh, I frankly, uh, I just look at the numbers and I see the fact that the world was shut down by uh, – uh, you know what? A quarter of a million people have died, and I know it's terrible, especially if you're one of those quarter of a million. Uh, but you know, when you stop and think, a quarter of a million people, folks, when you have a, a planet's got 7.3 billion, boy, you shut down everything for that. I mean, that's you know that that's almost like uh, well, it's terrible. Well, I, um, I I really don't understand it, so I better shut up and remove all doubt. <laughs> okay, let's move on here uh, to see a couple other things that I wanted to mention that I think it uh, I think that's pretty good. And then we'll be watching here. Uh, first of all, uh, someone's asked me the question, uh, do I think the, the stock market has made a major top? Yes, I certainly do believe that. Whether it continues to go a lot higher than where we are right now, I'm not sure, but nobody else is either. This is a you know very important pattern that was made up there. We've, we've uh, brought it to your attention you know, many times, so there's no reason to uh, you know, talk about it too much. But we're seeing some really bad things happening in our banking industry. 
predicts. Folks, take a look at how weak our banking sector is. Now, let me ask you a question. If you're a banker and uh, you're at one of these banks and they're going to give you a whole bunch of money, now, what do you think you're going to do with it? You're going to parcel it out or are you going to be a little stingy with it and use it to the best of your ability? I think that's what they're going to be doing. I think that people, the government that is sending these checks out to everybody, they think that they're going to go out and start buying right away. Well, they might be buying food, but I don't think they're going to be buying, you know, things like uh, televisions and, uh, you know, uh, Apple watches and stuff like that. I just don't I just don't think that that's going to happen. But again, that's my opinion. And I I try not to have opinion. Just look at the charts. That's basically it. The key to these markets uh, from from a you know interest rate is you just look at those Treasury bonds and Treasury notes. And, you know, we're not very far from zero interest rates. And basically, that's what Japan said. We're going to zero. And all of the central bankers are meeting this week. So what do you think they're going to be doing? They're going to be looking at some probably the same thing. So that's it. I remember about five years ago, we were giving a speech over in, in um uh, in, uh, in excuse me in Australia and we were flying to New Zealand and as we were getting in the airport they had stopped all they had stopped all planes to see what's going on. hey we got Mr. Z on the line John how are you this morning good morning Larry they had stopped all planes for what well, to, to let all of the of the of the country's planes, Germany and Australia, not Australia, Germany and France and the U.S., all of these with all the big boys were lined up all in a row, and they were each plane was uh, you know uh, headed out. And it was really kind of funny to watch it go. I think there were six of them. That to, this was a G20 meeting, but these six planes were heading over to uh, Wellington uh, for the G um, for the G20 meeting, and that's uh, that's why it was kind of funny. Sarah and I were looking out the window. And uh, it was uh, it was really interesting to see that going on. Go ahead, my friend. What's well, you up? know, Larry, uh, I have uh, in my life I have been uh, stuck uh, just driving uh, at a uh, uh, any particular spot and had a presidential motorcade go past with the same deal. I uh, I never heard the story of it happening in an airport. That's very cool. Yeah, it was funny. See, What's your uh, question? I today? wanted to ask if you could help me, please, uh, with silver. On the intermediate term, sure. uh, just by way of background, uh, I had uh, very successfully been trading silver for the past number of years, um, and uh, I was doing so since silver had repeatedly bottomed around, uh, I think it was like 1375, pick a round number, and that was <laughs> a FIB 786 level. Uh, based upon the rally from four dollars up to forty eight and you know you came down to that thirteen seventy five a couple of times, I think in sixteen and maybe in eighteen you did the same, so I had traded quite successfully, uh figuring that was a bottom, and then of course, March came uh i didn 't get trapped, thankfully, but we busted down to you know eleven as and change as you had documented my question with that background in mind. Do you have any reason to believe that uh, the silver price is destined to go back to and under 16 and change, or is it destined to have made a very major bottom and head higher in some particular fashion? Well, John, the answer to that is yes, no, and possibly. I really no. That I is, actually that you know, is there's great. well, I I, I, well, no. It's it's the the answer to the question is you know it's we've been in this trading range and the sixty four dollar question is, you know, we had a high last year at nineteen dollars and seventy five cents, which was the seventy eight percent level on the long term yes, weekly basis, and then on this last rally, you know, we couldn't even come anywhere near uh, that retracement level and when gold was breaking out to the upside and platinum tried to break out and then gave everything back plus about another three hundred dollars uh, an ounce so my assumption is these these metals are are bearish uh, now I, I will stand corrected if we get above 1762 in the um, in the gold in the June gold but the open interest is not telling us that it wants to go higher so those are just a few of the things that are you know making me wonder you know it, given all the fundamentals if you ever think of stuff like this back in the old days John when we were doing this 30 years ago you see numbers like this gold would be up $100 a day. 
without any trouble at all. But uh, that's not happening now. So there's just not a lot of interest in the gold market and even less interest in the, in the silver market. Now, the GLD does look pretty bullish, but, uh, you know, the regular gold contract certainly doesn't. I, uh, I like that idea of using 1760 as a, uh, a line of demarcation that will give you uh, clues to the answer to my question. And I'm looking at Tiger TV and see where you get that number. So uh, it's all clear to me. Thanks for the answer, Larry. I'll uh, bid you do, and uh, you have a great day. Thank you very much for calling in, John, and thanks for letting me know about that thing about the ICBC Bank, because we're going to see more of those things, I think, as some of these banks get a little bit scared of backing even these big hitters, because they can really get hurt badly if they're not careful. So that's a real good thing to look at. Uh, when we come up to the break here, we're going to have Simon Lee on, and maybe he'll give us some insight of what's going on with the farmers and some of the things that are heading on you know, with the market. So that'll be fun to uh, pay close attention to. Now, well, uh, the next thing we want to do is to talk just a little bit about the grain markets. They don't look very good, folks. I don't know if it's going to be uh, either here or there, but you'll see that uh, we'll have. We'll be right back, folks. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Larry Pesavento watches the markets 24-7, and now is a great time to try out his daily trading service, Fibonacci 24-7. Larry publishes videos and charts for subscribers throughout the week when warranted, and every weekend he puts out a thorough report covering worldwide markets, futures, commodities, and currencies with Fibonacci retracement levels, possible trading setups and zones, and stops and targets for all recommendations included. Larry applies the principles he's developed Developed over decades of trading while analyzing a variety of markets for subscribers. To see for yourself the types of videos, charts, and analysis that Larry provides for his subscribers, sign up for Fibonacci 24-7 today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. You'll also gain instant access to Larry's archived subscriber webinar from earlier this year. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
We have Cy Monley of Sylvia's Financial on the line. Cy, how are you doing this morning, my friend? I'm good, Larry. How are you? Pretty good. We have three questions. The first question is from a listener out in Nebraska, and he is asking, are we headed to the Dust Bowl type uh, of environment with the economy like we had in 1929 to 1938 uh, in the the, uh, farming market? What's your opinion there? No, and the difference really is if we were to allow markets to be free, then maybe, right? But the difference is Mm -hmm. we have the Fed. They'll spend money. So you got to... You got to think, why is the stock market up? Right? Mm-hmm. Why aren't we going to have the dust bowl? Why aren't these things similar? It's because of the. They'll throw everything at it. Mm-hmm. You know, two and a half, three trillion dollars could just be the beginning. So yeah. um, I think what's going to happen is, uh, you know, stock market breaks, we trade sideways. Yeah, we go into a six month, 12 month sort of sideways market. Larry, where you don't have growth, you think of the stock market, what's happened in the, last, the first 20% up of last year was just all buybacks. So you mm-hmm. correct that. Now you go into a period of sort of semi-deflation. So that's a good question. Um, but the backside of that, actually, if you're a farmer, is inflation. So mm-hmm. if we open up the country and, you know, Bill Gates made a statement, hey, it's going to take 18 months. And so let's take, say, it takes six to 18 months for this thing to sort of normalize and you don't get big growth back in the stock market. Um, so I don't think you have dust bowl. I think you have deflation or sort of stagflation for a little bit. Then you have inflation. So if you're a farmer in Nebraska, hold on this year because next year I think you, it could get pretty interesting, pretty bullish for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sai, there was an article that came out uh, this morning about the ICBC Bank in China where they are not allowing uh, any trading in any of the crude oil components, heating oil, gasoline, and crude oil, and also in soybeans and the soybean complex. Uh, do you have any feeling on what that means? Or, well, I mean, that seems um, rather strange. Yeah, that is rather strange. Um, again, it's, it's the Chinese. I'm not sure what to make of it. Um, think of it like this, though. It it really it, it doesn't matter for us because our soybean market is deliverable U.S. And so, what you really want to think of is 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 will China buy our grain? I think so. I mean, I think they're going to need to stockpile our grain again at some point. Is it now? I'm not sure. Right? I think it's going to be at cheaper prices. So um, they still need to buy lots of grain. Okay, the third question that we have is from a listener in Illinois, and he is asking, where is the bottom in the corn market, and what is the cost of production on corn? And that's interesting. I was just looking at that. If you're, t- if you're in Illinois and you're looking at the cost of production, um, your cost of production is probably around $3.60 to $3.70 a bushel. You know, so <sighs> deliverable against a these contract, you know, you're 50 cents under that. So where's the bottom in corn? I tell you, I think corn can continue to drift lower. Uh, You know, you look at the May contract is going to get to about three bucks. You know, cash corn in a lot of places is 250 to 280. So you're getting pretty darn cheap. The the answer to that question is tell me when demand comes back, right? If Uh. demand is half, right. And because we have supply, you know, there's two types of markets, supply and demand. Right now we all, we have enough supply and supply is getting bigger. If demand comes back, you put a bottom in the market. So watch oh. your driving habits. Watch the country. It might take three months. Don't get me wrong. You know, normal weather, mm-hmm. big big corn market this year. You have a three point five carry out. These corn mm-hmm. can easily go to two eighty, two seventy. Wow. Right now, does it stay there for very long? I'm not sure. You probably have to big, get big shorts. Um, again, I think that's where you have the six month of deflation problem. Mm-hmm. And then after that, Mr. Farmer, you, you got to hold on. So protect, protect, protect this year. Don't. It, it's really hard, but do, make sure you make sure you understand your county insurances, your, your ARC and your PLC. Make sure you're talking to your crop insurance agent. Right. Mm-hmm. Understand your insurances this year. Really, really good because that's what you're going to have to lean on. If you haven't hedged, if you haven't done any forward selling. Okay, this makes good sense. Now, the other question that we have is, uh, is the government helping the farmers? Are they getting some of this money that they're supposed to be, you know, these trillions of dollars going out? Are the farmers being uh, taken care of? Yeah, but I don't think it's that much. I think it's like 15 cents a bushel, um, some of the math I've read. So they're helping them in more of subsidized insurance, um, these, these ARC and PLC insurance programs. Um, so I would say that's where the help is coming in. 
Okay. Well, that makes really good sense. And I want to thank you for coming on the show because I know you're really busy. And no problem, Larry. I was glad to help you. Well, I we certainly enjoy it. That's for sure. You give one other question. A sugar. We're trading sugar at nine cents. We were at seventeen cents just a little while ago. Is there a bottom in sugar somewhere, or Cy? No, that's the same problem, right? It comes down to demand. What, which, what's happened is we all can see the supply side of the metrics, but when you go look at demand, it's just crushed. So it, it's sort of the same problem. Tell me when these demand curves change and you have bottoms in commodities. And the other thing, Larry, you know, we've talked about, you are in a deflationary period, right? I don't think the dollar breaks yet. That's the other problem. Think of exports. Think of, you know, relationships to other countries. The dollar, the U.S. dollar does not break. It is sort of a short-term flight to quality. So that's my problem. I think you have six months of the dollar staying strong. Then when you have inflation, the dollar breaks, right? And so you have, you'll come rushing back for a bull market, but that's timing and understanding that is, you know, economics master's degree. So it, and it's, it, here's the other thing I hear people talk about, Larry. You know, it's it's inflation versus deflation. It's really going to come down to the velocity of money. When do people mm-hmm. get back to doing things? You have to have that rush back. I don't think we're there yet, right? Ask me. I'm not going out. I'm a young guy. I'm 45 years old. I'm not going to go rush into the, you know, restaurants. Are you, Larry? You know, do you no, want to no, go out? No. I mean, no way, right? The older you get, the less you're going to risk you're going to take. And that might be a third of our population. So I don't think the velocity of money, people rushing back, is going to create demand just yet. So is there a bottom? I don't think so. Wow, this is really great information. Hey, thank you for coming on, my friend, and uh, we want to wish you the best of luck. Stay safe and take care of that lovely family of yours. Thank you, Larry. We'll do. You too. Okay, you bet. Thank you, folks. That was Simon Only of Sylvia's Financial and Farm Bureau. We'll take a quick look here at what's going on with the markets. We're still up on the day, selling off just a tiny bit. Uh, gold is still under a tiny bit of pressure. Uh, crude oil has just made a 50% retracement there at 1221 in the June. However, remember, folks, you've got to trade the August if you can trade it. Uh, frankly, if you're a neophyte trader, you shouldn't even come anywhere near the crude oil complex until some of this stuff is rectified. Anytime we see a market that goes minus $40,000, $37,000 is uh, quite a big deal, and you don't want to uh, you know, get in the way of it. That's the main thing to uh, pay close attention to because uh, you don't want to get stuck in something like what happened to that young man over in Singapore because that makes it a little different. I wanted to show this chart of sugar because uh, – we are down in an area, just think, folks, we were almost at $16 a barrel, $16 a pound here in sugar. And we've dropped, uh, wow, 60%. The down making a double bottom down here possibly at 978. Now I don't know what the cost of production is on sugar, but if you like double bottoms and you want to find a place to go long, wait till that bottom is formed. It goes back above ten dollars a pound, and then you'd have a better chance. So we'll take a little break here. 877-927-6648. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. 
The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, folks, I posted a chart of the Commodity Research Bureau Index. You'll notice that we're down here near a double bottom. And um, the, the key word there is potential double bottom. And so what we're doing is we're watching that. As we heard from Cy, you know, there's a possibility we could see corn get down to below $3 uh, a barrel if there's no demand, and that's possible. From my experience over the years is that during these times, like uh, W.D. Gann said, you know, the cure for high prices was high prices and the cure for low prices is low prices because that's where you're stimulating demand or rationing demand in the point of high prices. So we just be, keep, keep, our, uh, keep watching. Uh, that's all I'm doing is I'm waiting to see, you know, really clear ABCD patterns, three drive patterns, one, three, five patterns that give us a really good, you know, entry uh, into the uh, market. That's amazing thing that we're watching. For instance, you know, we had a recommendation to sell the gold up there at that 78 percent level at 1762. It's had a pretty good uh, break, but, you know, basically all we're doing is we don't know what's going to happen next. So you basically lower your stop down to about uh, 1755 and you know, that locks in a small profit. But if we're right, this could have a, a, a bigger percentage. So we don't know. The problem with that gold and silver market, folks, there's just no players coming into it. And you really need that. You know, that was a you can see when players were leaving the market in the crude oil, you can see what was happening there. I mean, that could easily happen in some of these other things. You know, there's there's not a, uh, a rule that says that uh, $3 has got to be a bottom in corn. It might be 250 you know, given what's going on in the world. So you've got to protect yourself because if you don't, you're telling Mr. Market that you know better than they do. And that's a, that's a very, very interesting thing. Since we're on the... Uh, on the uh, uh, talk about open interest here, I wanted to bring this to your attention here because if you are trading crude oil, it's important that you pay attention to this because uh, just about all of the CME firms have disallowed trading now in June and July. And you can see June and July was uh, 750,000 of the open interest. So the only other ones you can trade are August and September. And September is a little bit better to trade. And if you wanted to really get active, is watch the December contract for December. 20. Now, you'll notice it's, it's trading at a, a, a lot higher price, but the one thing that you want to do is that you've got a big open interest there in December, so that's the one you'd want to be trading. So, uh, frankly, with all the news coming out, you probably ought to wait a day or two just to see you know, how it rectifies, because we're at $12 here at the 61% retracement, and that doesn't mean it's going to stay there. You know, That's uh, the main thing to uh, keep in mind here. Let's see what the markets are doing right now. Oh, we're starting to sell off a little bit more, which was we were sort of expecting that, because we made a... Last night, I don't know if you folks follow these numbers, like 618 and 786 and stuff like that, but we made 
made a perfect 78% retracement of the high that we made on the daily basis. Let's get this up here. Maybe we can maybe we can show it to you folks here. Uh, I think we'll be able to do it. All I got to do is make a quick little correction here, and then we'll be able to get up here, and you'll be able to see we hit it right spot on, and I'll get this out of the way, and then you'll be able to see it. So bear with me here one second. That number came in at uh, 24,000 in the uh, Dow Jones, and our high uh, during this time was uh, 23,991. You missed it by 10 points. Let's get it up here so you folks can take a quick look at it, and you'll be able to see it here. Uh, I'm really not uh, watching copper too much, uh, Marshall, but I believe copper is headed lower. Uh, you know what? I do have copper for you, Marshall. By golly, I should never turn you down, my friend. And let's get up here and uh, take a quick look here at copper. And I think we'll be okay here. Mr. Copper, I believe uh, you'll notice here's where we are. This is the weekly. And I, we got up to that 382 retracement in copper at uh, 236. I believe there's going to be some resistance up there at 236. And we'll start to you know, move down a little bit more. Now, we did make a 78% retracement here uh, in uh, late uh, March. So that that gave the you know 40 cent run because that was a big ABCD right at a 78% on the long-term weekly, so that was a very, very important number. And and frankly, we could even go higher, I guess, but the way it looks right now, it looks like copper should be backing off, and that would give us a better a better place to uh, you know enter. So that's uh, the main thing that we would be watching. So, well, let's just move on here to the next one here that someone asked about, and since we're in the, the area of commodities, we're going to talk about the piggies. This is where, you're, folks, I'll tell you what, I can say with a lot of confidence down the road that's going to be really hard to get some meats and they're going to be really expensive so you know stockpile what you can ground beef or ground pork because uh down the road here you know these they're they're cutting back herds they're still almost giveaway prices for the hides you know leather and pigskin they're almost giving it away and that was a premium a premium way back in uh, september and august i mean it was selling it a you know really high premium and now they're they can't even give it away so when these markets change you know you got to be able to uh see ooh, something's happening here it was nice to hear Cy talking about uh you know the supply is there but there's just basically no demand and with the fed pumping everything they can into the market what if this doesn't work folks you know this giant experiments of helicopter ban or whatever it is if it doesn't work then we're going to be in deep doo-doo that's the that's the 64 dollar question that we have to ask ourselves and and the answer to that, I am not sure of. And you know what? I don't think anybody else is either. And that's the real key to what we're looking at in here. I wanted to share you share with you one other uh, one other things to mention here. And that is, hold on one second here. Let me get this up. It's about uh, almost very close. And that's the wheat market. Uh, we're getting very, very close to a, a big Gartley pattern in wheat. And then you'll be able to see here that we've got to go about another oh, 15, 16 cents. This is really important, folks, at 15, 14 in the May wheat, because that's going to be a big Gartley. And remember, if you're going to be buying there, I wouldn't risk more than four cents. I mean, these markets are moving so actively that I would do that. I haven't made a recommendation on that yet, and I probably will wait a day or two to see uh, what happens with it. But the wheat is forming really nice one. The, the corn trade uh, you know, went below the 325 level. Uh, beans bounced off the Gartley for a little bit and then went below it. So the loss on that would have been about a break even or just two cents. So uh, right now, we're just waiting. The euro, uh, those of you that belong to the 24-7, we're short the gold from 62, and we're long the euro from 107.40 and locked in some profits on those. And that's really uh, what we're watching real closely. We also still have the uh, the short position uh, in the uh, E-mini S&P from 28.80. Uh, and uh, we're waiting to see how that works out this week. We didn't take out last week's highs as of yet. That was very 
very important because of all those multiple ABCD patterns that were there, and it was really very, very important. Remember, folks, when you're trading the NASDAQ, you're basically trading Microsoft and you're trading Apple. That's 25% of the NASDAQ, so that's a very, very important thing to look at. Uh, someone's asked a question about the news. Folks, I'll tell you, there's so much news out there that if you, if you try to trade off the news, you'll be long and short within three seconds of each other, the way this news pops around. So all I know is it's uh, going to be different this time, and how it's going to end up, I'm not really sure. So we'll have to wait and see. Tomorrow, we got another segment coming up, and I want to remind you that we do have Shane Smolian on tomorrow. Uh, and then on uh, Friday, we will have Tim Bost. And I have one other, uh, hopefully, uh, one of the folks from this Foundation for the Study of Cycles that's been geared up uh, is possibly going to be our guest on Wednesday or Thursday, and that would be nice because I started cycle stuff way back in the late 60s, early 70s with the old foundation. 877-927-6648. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. With markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets, this is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30 day money back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
And uh, basically, I wanted to show this chart of the U.S., Germany, China, Japan, the 10-year government bonds. Uh, as you can see here, the Chinese uh, government bonds are about 2.5% yielding. Uh, U.S. is uh, just about uh, 0.60 right now. Uh, Japan is basically at even, and Germany is, of course, negative interest rates. Now, this all started back in 2008 with Helicopter Ben, folks. I don't know how this is going to play out. Uh, we're living in history, so we'll have to watch it. Keep a close eye on those Treasury bonds, folks, because if they start to fail, that is going to be the key that, uh-oh, something big is happening. Now, maybe maybe, uh, maybe they go negative. Who knows? <laughs> That's not going to happen. But someone asked the question, will oil go negative again? And Pedro, I don't know if it will or not. Uh, they've got, they've scared the, the bejeebies out of everybody with the oil. So my guess is they're going to put some restrictions on it because uh, when you can see a contract that goes minus is thirty seven thousand uh, dollars and it was one guy that was doing it you know there were some other maybe a few small people involved that were big hitters but there were no little guys in there getting killed uh, that 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 shouldn't have been happening because they were shutting down the trading on that uh, going in the last day of trading they don't allow you to do that so I frankly don't think oil will go to uh, negative again but guys can you think of this in September we were talking about oil was it sixty nine dollars a barrel we were in September uh, the third we were giving a seminar and we were getting ready for trading on Monday and the uh, Saudis had got hit with the drones and the oil was trading at $69 a barrel right at the exact 78 cents, $78 a barrel level, uh, spot on. And, uh, you know, we were saying this is where you want to short it. And, of course, uh, uh, we said, you know, uh, recover the short when it's minus uh, 37. And if you believe that, I still have two shares of the Brooklyn Bridge. Anyway, uh, let's keep our uh, pedal to the the metal here watching these things uh, be, be flexible make sure that you use stops folks especially now my goodness if you don't use stops now you could really get hurt and it's not just the pain it damages the trading soul and that's what really uh, really sets you back you can get you can get over the loss of a small loss and stuff but these monster losses that people like happen in Singapore bad news live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless